buttons. Good evening, how are we all doing? Lovely to see you all. Let's see who's lurking in the chat. If someone can give me a shout out to say whether the video and audio type stuff is working. I'm seeing a hello, so hopefully we're okay. AV's okay. Thank you, Pond Pimp. Right, let's have a look. Right. Hello to AS... Oh, absolute random. <laughs> ABSRND. Uh, Christopher Age. Christopher H. Good evening. Uh, Darius Jace. Dulkboot. Great name. Electric electrical skateboard in Venicel. Memory Harum. Harum. Just because it's fun to say. Pond the Pimp the Pin back. Tycheline is a bot. But I'll say hello to you anyway. And Ooglestraxy. Good evening. If I haven't seen your name, it's because Twitch isn't telling me. So how you all doing? Hope it's well. Good to see you. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Let's hellos. I'm doing good, Pond the Pimp. Everything is alright. Uh, we're going to... We're going to do something really simple. Which probably means we have lots of time left over. And then we're going to do some other stuff. Because that is as vague as I can possibly be. Let's turn this camera very slightly to the right. Maybe, maybe, because you need more of me in this, apparently. No. Um, yeah, so what are we going to do? We're going to look at doing some simple texture transitions based on world position of a fragment. Uh, should be easy, but I haven't done it before, so I may as well do it at least once. And may as well do that on stream, because why not? And then, what else? And then, yeah, I've got a bunch of shader toy uh, pages open. And I, there's basically of just a few really well-known effects. Like barrel distortion and vignette and stuff like that. So I thought we'd port those over to Lisp and get them into Nineveh if we have time. You know, we're just going to kind of roll with it. And again, it's one of these fairly open episodes. So feel free to throw questions in the chat and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think we're good. I think that's it. Let's do this. I'm highly caffeinated and ready to go. Let's have a look. So what we have over here, it might look a bit weird at first, but if I can just pan around. What we have is our, from episode 20, we were looking at chromatic aberration. Um, and so this is the post-processed aberrated scene. And this is the original texture. Uh, let me just jump down in this code here. This is the playwithverts.lisp. If you're following along at home, the repo is playwithverts. And the branch is episode 45 now, which is crazy. We've done so many episodes. It's really weird how long we've been doing this for now. It's over a year in time, but I'm not up to 52 episodes yet. So clearly I was slacking. Um, but there's some other stuff. There's that little bit of lisp thing going on. Oh, yeah. We, some of the episodes are just those as well. Ah. So let's have a look. Yes. So in our drawing code, we're drawing a bunch of things. We're updating a bunch of things. And then drawing them into this scene FBO, uh, which is just an FBO with uh, two attachments, as we can see down in the mini buffer. And then here we're doing some post processing where we apply a radial blur and also the chromatic aberration to that. And then we've got draw text, which is just the debug function, which is putting out the unprocessed uh, scene. So if we do this, we can see that's gone. And we brought it back. And just as a kind of reminder, here is the radial blur code. And so we can, I don't know, increase the number of steps or... Actually, let's do this. Let's increase the radial blur. Let's up the number of steps to like 64. And you can see we're getting some funky colors. Ugh. That distortion's horrible. But yep, yeah, that was the general idea. Actually, I really don't like that. Let's do this. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit of chromatic aberration. Everything's slightly blurry. Um, but we're not going to really use that too much. I just thought it was a nice base for some of the other things we're going to be playing with. Um, so what I'll probably do is just turn this down a lot. Um, actually, we don't need to turn it down at all. If we go back to play with verts, instead of... Um, doing anything else. We can probably just draw the texture, the unprocessed version, and don't set the scale. What does that give us? It gives it about 90 degrees. That 90%. That's... There we go. There's a full screen. Cool. So that's just blasting out the texture. Um, yeah, we'll do that for now. We'll take out the radial blur code and just go with this. 
Okay, so we're drawing a scene to a buffer and then we're just blitting that buffer essentially. Um, and what I want to do is, yeah, take a point in world space and then change the texture of these things uh, based on how far they are from that. So the first thing we need to do is need to go and find the code that draws this stuff. Now it's been a long time since so we looked at this, so I'm gonna go and, well, yeah, I'm gonna go and find out too what we have got here. But first, need to look at this. Um... <laughs> 40 fucking five. Right, let's have a look. Um... What are we going to do? So some pipeline seems to be the thing that is the, is the pipeline that draws things. As soon as we... Oh, there's a draw function. Ah, it's a generic function. Here's a method. Okay. And it maps over the given pipeline passing in some things. Well, that's cool. Um, and the pipeline in this case was some pipeline, which is this one here. We can see it takes um, so a few matrices, one that transforms from um, model space to world space, one from world space to view space, one to view space to clip space. Now, let's have a look what happens. So we have some vertices, which are implicitly in model space, that's what we call that, um, where the center, well, they're centered about the world, like, yeah, the model is in the center of the space kind of thing, at around zero, 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 zero. Uh, we've unpacked the normal, yeah, so we unpack the position, we unpack the normal, we unpack the UVs, which are in, um, behind the text method. Um, we change uh, the model position from a VEC3 to a VEC4. We transform into world, the, th that model position into a world position, the world position into a view position, and then we transform... Oh, there's a world normal as well we extract and pass along. Which is interesting. Um, I wonder what we use that for. World normal is the second thing passed out of the vertex stage. And in our system, the first argument is always GL position. And the second thing um, becomes the first argument to the next stage. So yeah, this is the frag normal. Which we're using for something. Oh yeah, we're just using... Uh, Oh, we're doing some lighting in world space, I guess. So yeah, there's a bit of shading on these objects, apparently, um, and that'll be being they'll be using that normal. Cool. So that seems familiar. So I would like to change from whatever texture they currently are to another texture based on how far they are. For now, let's just say from the origin, from zero zero zero, and then we're going to adjust that distance, animate that distance, and we should like see that all the, the kind of textures transform based on that. We'll get to how that is. First thing, we're going to need a texture to use. And I downloaded ooh, one of these buggers. Where are we? This guy. Apparently is a tile or texture. Um, but I don't know where I downloaded this. Just download it again. Doot. Okay, it's called Seamless. Okay, let's That'll be down in downloads. I'm just going to go down there. Downloads. Uh, seamless. Actually, let's just take that path and go uh, copy file. Copy file. JPEG to. Um, yeah, here's our local project. Project play with it. Let's just say Rust dot JPG. Boop. So hopefully now in here. We should look, and there's Rust. So that's great. We've got that in our directory. We don't have like a special media directory, do we? No, we just dump everything in the same place. That's cool. How did we go about loading textures in this? Do we have a um, assets? Yeah, here we go. Um, and this was a function called text. Now, I remember this being a bad idea to call it text because it then overwrites um one of the functions from one of the data types that's defining Keppel. So that's a pretty bad name, but as nothing's broken so far, we'll stick with it, but we may have to fix this up later. So hopefully if we do text and then our path, which is relative to this project, uh, which will just be rust.jpg, 
We should get a sampler. Excellent. That's what we want. And so that's the one we're going to use. So it loaded in that texture and then it called sample on it, which gives us an object that we can pass to our shaders. Um... <laughs> Sergeant Queef, hello, sir. Oh my God, you're on. Yes. Um, you have one of those Microsoft ergonomic keyboards, right? Yeah, this old bugger. It's great. I uh, yeah, bought a few of those because it just, it does the job. Are you playing around with the... Uh... All right, he's saying good because it's inspired me to get a new one. Nice. I had uh, 10 or so... Oh, I had a 10 or so years old one, but I bought a new one the other day I'm using now. Have you got one of the uh, fancy um, new ones? The kind of um, like ultra thin, like a big archy kind of thing? Or are you going for the old school? I just, for some reason, I really like this old one. It's not as... Uh... Yeah, I am. I, I'm not like super into mechanical keyboards and stuff. But I bet I could be, but um, I would really like to try that heirloom keyboard that that, that Kickstarter, those Kickstarter folks make. Cause ah, oh, that was that was cool. Just looks nice. I need to. I want to try one of those split things, and I'm not shelling out the money for whatever those. Uh, oh, what's it called? Someone will be able to tell me the the ridiculous one with the kind of wells which your hands sit into. And you type and all the keys are kind of curved around in there. Yeah. Let's have a look. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so. We're going to pass in another texture. Um, so we're going to call it alt text or alt. Yeah, we'll just call it alt text, even though it's a sampler. Um, that's a bad name. I'm going to alt Sam. Um, yeah, let's compile that, and then, ah, this is going to be interesting as well. Um, now we go to some pipeline, but that was, this pipeline is called from draw, so let's go back to draw again. Um, Oops, some pipeline. Um, all right. And I guess we really to, we would need to update all the pipelines to take this new argument. Let's just try it and see what happens. So, old Sam, and we're going to pass nil for now. No crashes, so apparently we're not uh, mapping over any pipelines in here that are using. Uh, that aren't using um, some pipeline right now, so this is fine. Um, I'm probably just going to bodge this in rather than do anything too fancy, so let's just go back to... Um, what was that? Uh, what was the file we were just looking at? No, some pipeline. Come on now. All right. Um, draw. Oh, probably it's probably called render, isn't it? Let's have a look. There is a file called render, so let's come on, Chris. Learn to type one day. Um, nice. So let's just add a. We're just going to stick a global variable here, and we'll deal with it later. Def var um, alt sampler um, is nil, and then in our Play with verts reset function. We'll just say unless that's populated, set it to text rust.jpg. Nice. And then we'll just run this as well. So it is populated. Done. So now we have alt sampler. And then in render. Or in things, wasn't it, where everything's passed in? We can say alt sampler, and we'll get away with that for now. So that is now being passed into this GPU function here. And I suppose we can test it in a very simple way. Where do we actually sample um, albedo? Here we go. Albedo's up here. If we change this to alt sam and recompile, we'll see it. Everything is now colored the same. Uh, this is our alt. 
texture. And now it's switched back to albedo again. Nice. Okay. What do we do now? Um, what I would like to do now is to start doing the distance stuff. So another uniform we're going to pass in. Actually, we'll hard code it for now. Um, we're going to call it the focus. And it's going to be a VEC3 and it's going to be a 0, 0, 0. And that's going to be the center of our effect. And then we're going to calculate the distance um, from where from where our fragment is in world space to this, which is also in world space. So effect distance is the length of, and now we're going to have to mess around. So we're going to have to do um, our world pos, which we, which we don't have in here yet. So we're going to have to pass that in. Um, our world pos minus the focus. And uh, yeah, rather than doing this, actually, we have some functions in um, in our uh, maths library, RTG math, uh, that can do this for us. So let's just do this, um, and that should be the distance between two points. What isn't it like? Oh yeah, well, of course, world world passes I'd identified. Just the thing I was saying a second ago. So we're going to need to pass the world position of this fragment. Now we have all the world positions for each um, vertex, so we're going to pass that along. Um, in fact, we'll pass it after frag normal up here. And when you specify a value for a vertex, any fragment in between those vertices it interpolates between them. So if it's like one here and ten here, then halfway between it'll be five. So it's linearly interpolated. Right. So after world norm. We're going to pass world position. Well, this is actually quite handy. Um, we're going to recompile some things, and some things would break. Yes, we're. Uh, it's saying that um, down here. Um, it's expecting the second stage to take a vector three, a vector two, and a float, but ours now takes a vector three, a vector three, a vector two, and a float. So we need to update this spec. Okay, um, and let's just abort from that. That's fine. We don't need to worry about it. And we'll try continue, and it's freaking out. Can we just continue from that? Oh, let's put you over here and get back here and see what I've done wrong. There's no, oh, wait a second. There's no applicable GLSL function for vector three distance when called with vec three, vec three. Really? That's kind of strange. Turns the distance between two points defined by vectors, blah, blah, blah. Now there should be very equivalent. Oh, wait a second. I bet we haven't actually loaded them yet. Let's have a look. Um, if we go back to our project here and look at ASD, we'll see that we have, we don't explicitly specify RTG math here, which is also odd actually. Oh no, that will have been depended on by one of these other things, but we'll put it here explicitly, RTG math. Um, and we want to specify RTG math dot vari, I believe it's called. G math. Barry. Yeah, that's the one. And this specifies all the GPU equivalents of the functions in RTG math. So let's go back to the REPL and just quick load that. That's loaded now. And hopefully, when I recompile this, it's still complaining. Boo! What? Wait a second, this probably is a distance function in uh, GLSL already, isn't it? Yeah, there is. <laughs> Let's just use that. I'll find out what's wrong with that other thing later. Um, don't need to worry. Oh, what did I do? 
All right, we're back to this. Say continue. No. Come on now. What have we got? The arguments for one stage are not compatible with the input arguments of the next. So it's saying that vec3, vec4, vec2, and float. Oh, right. This is a vec4. Of course it is. Um, we actually only need a vec3, so let's just swizzle this down to a vec3. If I could type. Um, and say continue. And now we should be... We're alive again. Okay. So despite all my fucking around, everything's still running, which is nice. Okay. So now we should have the world, world position being passed in. And it will be a vec3. And it will be available. So now we have the effect distance. Um... So at various different points, it's going to have a positive number which says how far away it is. So let's say we want um, everything further than 20 away uh, to be textured with the second texture. So let's have a look. How do we do that? Um, we're going to... What we're going to do is we're going to mix two textures together. So we're going to mix albedo with our alt text, our alt sampler, and we're going to mix it by a certain amount. Let's see if the old uh, help is available. Nice. So. So we linear interpolate between two values, and the last argument, the third argument, is the value to interpolate between x and y. So um, I guess this is our 0 to 1 value here. And we want to transition from one to another at a certain point, so I think we can use step here. Let's look at the documentation for step. My head has not been in this for a while. Um, specifies the location of the edge of the step function um, and then the value so the edge in this case will be let's say 20 and then the value is going to be the effect distance let's just see what happens when we do that I think that might be all we need oh dude okay um, let's bring that number down a bit so we can see that <laughs> That worked all right. Any fragments that are less, it's actually cool because under here we can see it, that are less than 20 units from uh, 000, the origin, they've got the normal texturing and everything else has got the rusty texture. I'm actually going to swap these around. And um, do we have time passed in here? Nah, that's rubbish. We've got to have that. So let's say now is a float. Um, and let's go to things where the we pass in the arguments. We can say now is... Do we have a now function? Yeah. Let's do that. So now we've got a time value that's coming in. Um, so let's do this and say... I don't know. We can say it's 5 plus... Um, times sign of now uh, 20. Whoops. Oh, yeah. It's meant to be sign of now times 20. There we go. And so now we have this little transition. So we're just animating between. Let's get rid of this warning because we're fine without that. And this is going to be going between, obviously, uh, 1 and minus 1. So let's just add 1 here. And this would be one of those things that you could... It's a really cheap effect that you could use for things like... Um, okay, where's one example? Think, Chris. Um, if you, like, reach the end of a level and you've got this kind of, like, decrepit level and it's all, like, dead and gnarled. 
and you could have a sweeping effect that brings everything back to life, for example. And it's just so simple because you can throw something like a well position in here. Um, yeah, that's really cool. So, um, now we're doing a hard step here. We could change this out to smooth step. Uh, we could try a few things, and we've got again, like we're uh, not long in. Uh, aside some for some faffing, um, this has been very quick. So we'll play with this a little. Ah, okay. So let's let's have a think about this. Let's move some of this stuff out first. Um, we'll call this the edge, and this is the edge, right, so that's the same as it was, good. How are we doing over in chat? Sergeant Queef talking about the keyboard again, uh, the old school variant, but not as old school, but not as old school because it's the 4000 version. Not sure what this is. Oh yeah, it's 4000, so I get, yeah, same as you, I guess. Um, Apparently 3,000 had stiffer keycaps. Didn't know that either. Um, old one still works, but it has a, a Swedish layout, and I've been using the US layout for so long, the Swedish layout just feels weird. Yeah, man, I can't I can't switch. Even on... Um, yeah. <laughs> no matter what keyboard I'm using, it's going to have a UK layout, because I, I can't relearn that at this stage. Um, borrowed us. Did someone... <laughs> Someone say Barchin. Hello, sir. Good to have you here. Um, effect Fist. That's a better name. Not leaving that. That's going to confuse the shit out of me later when I've forgotten, forgotten the joke and it just becomes a problem. Don't do this in your code because you will have issues. Okay, so um, let's wibble the edge of this a little. Because it's a little boring. Um, so let's... Let's just get the angle. Um, to our... Um, so, the angle between... If this is top down... Wherever our fragment is... Let's get the angle between... Um, essentially north forward. Like minus Z. And that position. And then we can throw that into something else as well. And mess with this. So, how are we going to do that? Well, we can... Um, we're going to take this out to a separate variable. Do the subtraction over here. Um, and can we just change this to length now? Yeah, so that is the equivalent thing, which makes sense. Um, and so now we should just be able to use... Um, again, I want to use one of the RTG math uh, functions, so I'm a little confused. Yeah, we're using RTG math. Let's have a look. Let's just try it. So we'll do angle is vector 2. We'll see why vector 2 in a minute. Um, angle between or angle from? Okay, so... Fr um, Oh, let's just look at the docs and work out which one's which. One of them's um, always positive, and one of them um, is directional. So angle between is... Um, returns the angle between two vectors. Yeah. Oh, equivalent to ABS angle from. Okay, so this is always going to be positive. Um, so angle from. Um, and so we'll have just straightforward. And we will take the um, x and y from our position difference. Because we're looking straight down, we don't need the z component. Wait a second, no, that's wrong. <laughs> x and z. We don't need the y component. Y is up and down. So we only need x and z. So let's, let's do that. And it's going to freak out, because there is no applicable method for the GLSL function ATAN when called with vec2 and float, apparently. Yeah. Is that true? That's interesting. 
I'm kind of annoyed I haven't run into that first. I thought I tested this. Bad. How has this not come up before, actually? That's very strange. Oops. Let's, uh... I actually really want to check GLSL A tone. Gen type to gen type. Okay. So yeah, both would have to be the same type. That's interesting. Yeah, this never would have worked then. Where did I get this from? Oh, wait, wait a second. Of course, I'm looking at the wrong code here. I'm looking at the Lisp version because I've just jumped to definition. This is the Lisp version. Um, let's go to the... Um, GLSL version and so we'll do angle. Oh, yeah. That is not okay. If we do VEC2, does that work? Ugh. We're just... This is not how you should do this. Okay. Um... Oops. No. <laughs> Cross VEC2, VEC2. What is going on? You don't use your stuff for a few weeks and everything fucking falls apart. Damn it. I say there is a cross defined for this. And there's dot defined for. Hmm. Starting to get a bit worried about this now. Okay. It's like this stuff hasn't been loaded. But we quick loaded this already. What have I done wrong? Nope. God damn it. Okay, I'm just digging a deeper hole here right now. So let's not do this. Where are we? This guy. Let's go back. Just say, let's get rid of angle for a minute, seeing as that isn't working. Come on now, Chris, get that working. Oh, what a pain. That's rather annoying. So I guess, what's the, oh, fuck. This is where my brain goes flat and I can't even remember how to get the angle between two vectors. Um, well, dot product is going to be um, sine of theta, isn't it? Um, oh, let's just do it. Angle between two vectors, da 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 da. Yeah, cos theta. I'm just, I actually, I'm not, I'm, I'm just getting really aggravated. How is that? How did that code get in? <laughs> how did that code get in when it's wrong? It's very annoying to me. Ah, well. Um, actually, I'm going to go and see what RTG math go and file an issue on that right now. Um, Sergeant Creep is saying the best thing is when you forget your own APIs. Yeah, man. Um, oh, I'm not logged in here either. Oh, screw this. I'll report this afterwards or someone can <laughs> report it now. Um, yeah, this is like basic soccer toa shit as well. Um... So yeah, inverse of the cosine. Yes, of course, we can just ACOS the dot product of the two. Should be fine, right? Um, is 
This is not where I thought I would be losing time. Um, and then, what should we add to this? Plus five plus um, sine of our angle times some factor for some reason. Um, ooh, that wasn't what I expected. Somebody help me at my dead brain out and tell me what's going on. <laughs> oh yeah, it's right here. Angle is A cos of V1 dot V2. So that should be all right. Um, oh, not normalized, good point. There we go, idiot. Right. Uh, let's times 10 to this. There we are. Let's add some. Oh no. That's not going to work. Yeah, no, yeah, it is. Plus now it's the angle. That's a bit better. That's easy. Vector 2 plus vector 3 equals vector 5. Am I right? Sounds good to me. You're my kind of idiot. <laughs> we'll make games. Oh, that's that's really distressing, isn't it? When that's what, meant to be what you're doing for your job. And you just forget the simplest stuff. Ah. I say rather than doing step, it would be nice to do something else. Um, let's just have a look at smooth step. And uh, all one word? Probably forms a Hermite intermolation between two values. Um, so the lower edge and the upper edge, and then we specify something. That's cool. Uh, so I guess we can put a soft edge on this thing. Um, it would actually be nice to maybe just do uh, something at the edge of the line. So if we... Already the fist was a bad idea. <laughs> Um, so what do we want to do? We want to do, um, where's the doodling device? Aha! And let's get a shell up and turn on the doodling program. Okay. So it'd be nice to have, um, at the edge, we could just screw around with the texture some more. We could even pull in a third texture there. Have like a little sparkly thing that we put on the edge. For now, we'll just mess with the color a little. Um, so we have an origin point, and we have some distance uh, at which we want the edge to be. And then it'd be cool at that point if we could just have a little curve um, that we can then use to modify something. So zero to one and back again. Um, and say just using a little sign there would be fine. Um, Or if we do cos and we just mirror it. So, okay. The, what have we got here? These values are going to be increasing. So we've got, so this is distance zero, one, two, three, four. And then if our distant, if our desired distance is four and we minus four from these, we would have uh, yeah, minus four, uh, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. Um, and then we start getting positive numbers. One, uh, one, two, blah, blah, blah. Um, so let's... I don't know, let's fuck, fuck around with this a little. It'd be cool if we had a graphing function, which we do have somewhere. Let's see if we can uh, bring that back to life. Um, I had a little uh, 
do do What do I have around here? I swore I had a little function already defined. I prepped some stuff before the stream. Oh yeah, here it's it's in blur. Um, this little thing called splat, which at the moment just draws red. Um, but we could stick some graphing stuff in there and use that for. Excuse me, use that for debugging. Let's have a look. So, um, bring open play with verts. And then down here where we're drawing things, um, let's draw, let's just call splat for a second with nil. Okay, good, we've got red. Uh, what happens if we do um, graph? Actually, could we just do this in, in, the other, in the other fragment shader? Let's go have a look. Again, it's forgetting how uh, my own code works. That's the issue here. Um, so there is a function called graph. And it takes a function from float to float and a UV um, in the basic case. Let's do that. So let's just do um, a function from float to float. Well, oh, let's do our lambda first, which is going to take x, which is going to be a float. Um, and it's going to do, let's do sine of x. And let's do, yeah, let's just pass in it. We got the UVs? Yeah, UV. Boop. Well, that looks nightmarish. Oh, yeah, because the result is being textured onto everything. Okay, so that's probably a bad idea. Uh, let's go back to our splat thing. Bring it back in. And instead of red, we'll just put our graphing thing. So now we've got a curve. Um... There's not much to see here. So one of the other versions here, the XY range can be passed in as a VEC4. So um, when we graph, we pass in a function. And now let's do this. We'll go from minus one, minus one to one, one. I think that's how you do it. Maybe not. Or is it minus one to one, minus one, one? Yeah, there we go. And let's do minus four. Let's do, let's do minus 10 and 10. Um, that's rather strange. Because that's not the correct, <laughs> that's not the correct result for that function. Um, what are we getting at here? Oh yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm scaling the Y. Scaling Y. Uh, should be this, the X range we want to make wider. There we go. Now we've got a nice little, nice little bump. Remember we wanted to put a bump around... Uh, the distance uh, around the uh, edge of our effect. So if we, what have we got originally? We've got some, basically we've got an increasing value. We've just got x, a value that's going up over time. Let's change this scale as well. So we've got an i square. It's going up over time. Um, and then we want to have something happen once we reach um, our specified distance. So let's minus oh, let's minus four, which should shift everything down. So now the point where it becomes positive is at four, and that's going to be the edge of our effect essentially. Um, and we could um, clamp this to zero. Um, so we can say, I don't know. Um, it's got to be at least zero. So there we go. So now nothing happens until we hit four and then it goes up. Um, is that what we want? Um... I'm not sure. It'd be good to have for at least one unit after this to, to uh, feed into a function. So I don't know what's the uh, what's the thing for that. Got my head turned around again now. Because I mean, you could just do like sine of this, 
And so basically, and you have a sign at the end of that line. Um, but you don't want it going on forever. Let's think about this another way. Let's go back to X. Um, pretty sure we want to do the minus four. So this is going to be our color value. And then... Actually, maybe we make the uh, little bump first. So let's just have a look at what happens if we square x. And we negate it. That gives us a little bump. Then we offset it. Um, and then we... Let me do that. So we've got our single bump, and we want to stick that around 4. So do we just do this? Yeah, there we go. That's roughly what we were going for. A little curve that happens around the edge of our effect. So then we can parameterize this a bit. We can say, let's um, edge is 4. Let's do edge. Um, and Yeah, that'll do for now. Okay, so that's... That was just a little experiment that we could do in the shader. Now I can go back over here. Um, and we can kind of drop this code in and do something with. So... Um, our edge is already defined here. So we don't need to calculate that again. And then this is, uh, we'll call it a band, because it's going to be a little band around the, why am I doing that with my fingers? Uh, a little band around um, the edge of this effect here. We'll see it in a second. Um, let's do that. What do we get? Symbol X is unidentified. True. Um, this value is going to be our effect distance. And then... Probably solve that now, haven't I? Yes. Let's bring the raffle back again. Now, hopefully, let's just do a really simple thing. Let's just add the color, like add bands to the color of the albedo, and it should get brighter around the edge. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now we could, now we've got a value between zero and uh, like that goes up and down. We can feed that into other things. Um, in fact, we know it goes between 0 and 1. Uh, so we can use this for... Well, we could use this for a bunch of stuff, actually. Um, let's have a look. What if we do times band instead of adding band? So we'll add 0 here. So now it's only the original texture around that point in the band. So let's swap these around again. And now it's only the other texture there, which is cool. So we could widen the band. How do we... Uh, let's have a look at that. How do we change the band's thickness? Now, I'm just trying to think. Now, is this worth playing with this more? Um, or are we losing time from doing other things? Um, who knows? Because let's go have a look. Actually, let's um, I know this is simple stuff. It's just like it's been on kind of my to do list to just at least play with this once. Um, so it would be nice to widen this a little, so the range of values around there. Um, so the way we could do that is with, uh, where's our, 
little splat function here. I mean, obviously, we can offset um, the curve and bring that up. And then and now that includes more values. But now we're going to have to, whatever the, uh, the height is, we're going to have to divide by 2 to bring it down to the 0 to 1 range. So let's just do thickness is 2. Thickness is really an offset. And then we should be able to change this. Yeah. There's some controllable parameter at least. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll happy enough with that. So let's put it at three and take thickness. Um, oops. Go back to over here where we're calculating our band. Thickness is going to be five or four or whatever. Um, we had plus thickness. Um, and then we were dividing this whole, th oh no, dividing, yeah, the whole thing here. Do, do, divide by thickness. Oh yeah, it would really help if we were actually looking at the uh, at this thing here. Okay. So now we can control that whole band. Cool. Kind of interesting, we have that hard edge. But I think I know why that is. Um, do I know why that is? Something's not being absoluted here. Let's just go have a look at the uh, go have a look at the function again. No, see around that point, we should have a full arc. So I wonder what I'm what I'm doing wrong. Um, are we still doing step or something like this? Wait a second. Uh, we're doing band. Yes, we're doing step, aren't we? So that's going to go from zero to whatever the value is um, really hard. So can we just stick, how do we do this then? Oh, there we go. All right. So again, nothing immediately useful about, about this, but I uh, wanted to play with this effect. Again, it's a really, it's a really simple one I've definitely heard of before, but. I've seen it be used for actually really pretty things. And the grass example was oh, it's one I actually saw in a game, which was just like, yeah, you complete the level and then like all these flowers just grow over all the grass spreading out from the point where you succeeded, like picked up a star or something like this. And something like this would do the job, but with prettier textures. And of course, rather than just doing a texture here, you can do anything you want. So this, this these numbers you can use to parameterize any function. Um, so you can do any kind of procedural stuff being throttled by these values. So passing world values through and doing stuff with them is really cool. Of course, like by moving the origin around, um, let's just sign now this. Um, oh, of course, we're gonna have to multiply it by something a little more exciting than that to see some movement, but um, you know, it just works. And yeah, so that's kind of cool. That's, that's where I wanted to get to with this. So we have just about hit the first hour. So I was thinking of transitioning over to, um, basically porting some code over. Um, if you'd like to see any more poking around with this shout up in the chat now and uh, we can definitely do that um, otherwise I'll kind of ready to move on let's see what's been going on over here Point of him, the fist was a bad idea. Baggers, this date, that's a, it is a good quote, in or out of context. Actually, I like that one. <laughs> Lessons learned. 
you think I'd learn from life, but nope. Gotta see it in code first. Sergeant Queef is saying, I'm lucky to have a fiance that is into math so I, and have studied some semi advanced math so I can always pull her in and uh, pull her hair until she reveals her secrets. That is handy. That is good stuff. Darius, a little while ago, I missed this comment, was just saying, yeah, vector math is somewhat strange. Every time I stopped doing it for a month, I forgot everything about it. Yeah, man, that's exactly how I feel. When I'm using it, I'm fine. Like, when I'm actually working on the libraries, it's kind of all right, but just drained. Um, Pontiff was saying, naming Easter eggs are really funny, actually, especially in the moment where the PR is invalidated by your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> work time now cool yeah let's uh let's move on then um we'll just leave this running because it's cool so there's a few things i wanted to look at maths lots of maths um let's get rid of this tileable stuff there's one really simple um technique called a vignette um and it's just this kind of thing, this darkening at the edge. Um, let's have a look at what the definition of a vignetting is. I've never actually looked it up. In photography and optics, vignetting is a reduction of the image's brightness or saturation towards the periphery compared to the image center. The word vignette from the same root as vine originally referred to the decorative border in a book. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, it's this slight darkening around the edges. And so that there are little functions that will simulate that. And you can just put that over the top. It's one of those cheap things that you'll see in, like, uh, in things. So, like, this, this thing here has very slight vignetting around the edges. And it just, it just sells it a bit. It, it's just one of those subtle things that is, uh, I didn't want to go there yet. Where am I looking? Um, and this blue spiral as well has just subtle vignetting around the edge and it just does something it's just it's slightly pleasing to the eye um, so if I turn it off let's see here can we do this okay so that's zero so it's probably one yeah this is without and this is with it just looks better it just looks better so i want it and there's a couple of um a couple of things here this is again a simple vignette effect um there's also a term called natural vignetting um and saying so let's ha let's have a look at um mechanical first so mechanical vignetting occurs when light beams emanating from objects um from sorry from object points located off axis are partially blocked by external objects such as thick or stacked filters, secondary lenses, and improper or oh say and improper lens hoods. This is the effect of changing the entrance pupil shape as a function of the angle, resulting in the path of light being partially blocked. Uh, darkening can be gradual or abrupt. So yeah, this is one of the reasons you'd get vignetting. Um, optical might be the result of things to do with the lens itself. Um, unlike the previous types, natural vignetting um, is not due to the blocking of light rays. The fall of is approximated by the um, cosine, well, cosine, cosine to the power of four, or cosine fourth, law of illumination four off. Here, the light is proportional to the fourth power of the cosine of the angle at which the light impinges on the film or sensor array. So it's coming in here, cosine to the power of four has some kind of effect of, um, yeah, how much light is being lost. Just the angle it's coming in which makes sense lights coming in at an angle it's going to be spread out more over something so you're going to lose energy there um that would be my guess anyway wide angle range finder lenses and the lens designs used in combat cameras are particularly prone to, prone to natural vignetting so this is another style of vignetting and um so this person has a natural vignetting uh, shader which is based on work by this chap here um, 
So yeah, it's just something that um, recreates natural vignetting as opposed to either mechanical or kind of ad hoc vignetting. Um, this is just something that's satisfying. So what we're going to do is port this stuff over, and then we'll have some extra functions in Minima. So, um, where did that go? Did I get rid of some stuff? Oh, there it is. That was strange. Why did that stop rendering? Oh well. Um, so we'll leave this here. Um, let's just... Set the clear color to be something. Um, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that. No. What am I doing? Ah, horrible. It's disgusting. That's pretty bad as well. How's that showing up on there? Ugh. Oh, what have I done? Oh, yeah. Continue. Ah, that's barely showing up in there at all now. I'm not sure how that is in the stream. I mean, it's, it's just a gross color, but it's something in the background. Um, just so that I'll be able to see the vignetting stand up against, stand out against it. We'll deal with that soon. Um, let's just open a file that we can just dump some stuff in. Let's take this. Um, actually, let's, uh, yeah. And let's just do C mode. make this a little more stream friendly so we can zoom in a bit and seeing as the default indenting is insane let's just drop that back as well So we can see that we have, well, what are we putting in here? So the input is just the um, frag coordinates, x, y, and the resolution, fine. Um, so a UV essentially is what we want, that's fine, we can, we'll pass that in. Um, then we, uh, yeah, take the inverse of that. Um, we well this is interesting multiply with the STH for intensity what is that it's more clear here it's UV times XY times 15 I want to look up what that value is, why that's important, and then we check, we uh, raise it to the power. Um, you know what we kind of nice actually is we just shove this into a graphing function again, and uh, see what see what it's doing to these numbers. That's just a nice way to get a feeling of uh, what's going on with a function anyway. So let's go over here. Uh, we're going to play with verts, and we're going to bring in splat again, which is our little uh, graphing function. We'll jump over to it, and we're going to start defining vignettes, uh, which is going to take a UV, um, what am I doing, which is a VEC2, and yeah, how are we going to test this? We'll see. Let's start with, let's just start by returning one. Um, oh yeah, Stefan G with defining GPU functions. 
and carry on. All right, now I'm gonna bring up the REPL just in case, because it's always happy to, always helpful to have it around. Um, and let's go change our graph. So we're gonna take, our function is uh, always gonna take a float. So when we call vignette, um, we actually wanna transform it a little. So we're gonna create a UV, um, which is just gonna be X and zero. Actually, what does this function take in? Yeah, it takes a UV in. I don't think it takes anything else. Does it use... No, it seems to just be based on the UV. So that's fine. Um, which is between 0 and 1. So let's just put it at 0.5 for the way up the screen. So be 0, 0 to 1, 1. We're going to look at the uh, going across the X axis um, just in the center of the screen. Now, is that going to actually give us anything? It's going to give us very little. We're going to see a bit of ramping here and a bit of ramping here. We could do it across the way. We could just uh, say that the UV will be XX. And then we'll get from this corner to that corner. But I think that's a little more complicated. I'm just going to start with uh, 0.5. And we can see right now that because we're returning 1, that's a constant. So all the way across, we're getting 1. If we change this to 0, we'd see that line move. So that's our graph. And then we're going to start adding things. So the first thing he does um, is um, say UV is equal to UV times, um, yeah, 1 minus, and then we're doing some swizzling, UV um, yx. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so he's flipping the order of the arg of the arguments. So we're flipping x and y here. Um, we're saying um, one minus that. That's interesting. So our x is increasing over time. What happens if? Uh, and x becomes, oh, my head's doing a bit of a funny thing there. I'm just trying to visualize what the, what the change actually is that we're doing. Um, let's do a, a dumb version instead. Let's just, we'll take uh, the x coordinate of our uv because that's the thing that's changing. It's going from 0 to 1. This is always 0.5. Um, and let's multiply that by um, 1 minus this. Okay, so we get that kind of curve. So it's positive, I guess that's 0 and 1. I really need um, some way of adding like uh, lines to this as well. I'm not sure if our graphing function has that. Let's just uh, let's have a look. Line style is Float and axis style is float. And I can't actually remember <laughs> what those mean. Um, did I write any documentation for it? Did I? Fuck. Let's see what axis style is for. Um, okay, so it controls axis thickness and axis color. So that's not really what we're after. Um, and line style is going to change, uh, yeah, the style of the line as well. So yeah, I, I, I need to add grid lines as well. Um, I could just graph a separate function, but, um, but yeah, never mind. Okay. So we're doing this across the UV. Something like that. Um, and then we are multiplying the two together. So the vignette is multiply x of uv, y of uv, and then 15. That was that magic number that I have no idea about. Um,
And can we simulate this in any way here? I'm not really sure. Could we raise it to the power of two, perhaps, and add 15? Does that give us anything like a... Um, no. Oh, wait a second. Maybe it does help. I mean, fifth, like adding is just going to raise this up. And then the next thing is raising this to a power of something. So power of 0 0.25. Let's just see what that does. Okay, so we're getting a, a kind of flat base and then some increasing values. It's kind of interesting because we're almost getting the opposite here. This is like, this is a decreasing value here. We're going from one, then we're ramping down to zero. Let's just have a see. Let's see what happens when we, we do it properly. So vignette um, is, oh no, wait, not plus 15, Chris. You're an idiot. Where's that plus 15 nonsense? Oh yeah, it was plus one, wasn't it? Times one, times two, times 10. Okay, let's take out that explanation thing here. Interesting. Not entirely sure, we are building a shaping function. That's, that's the one bit we can say with some certainty, but uh, yeah, I'm not getting the intuition here quite yet. And then vignette is uh, raising uh, this thing to the power. 0.25 um, and then apparently that's it then you just do vec4 of of that now this isn't going to work because this thing expects a float to be returned so uh, what we'll do instead is we'll look at um, I mean this is a float and then we're making it into a vec4, so let's just return it as a float for now. The following variables occur more than once in the let. Vin or vig. Hey, how about that? Oh, so that's interesting. Okay, let's uh, let's change the scale of this graph to something more useful. What if it's from minus one to one? To one. There we go. So let's do from zero to one. And let's do, actually let's do minus 0 0.5 to 1.5. Give us a little bit of working room there. And then we've got minus, minus two to plus two. Okay. So here we are, this is the curve that we're making. And this gives us, of course this is right across the middle here. Um, but this is the grayscale that we're getting. This is the value that we're making. So at least we can see what kind of shape is being made. That is not what we were doing in our approximation. So I don't know how I fucked that up. Um, but if we change the value of um, our y value here, let's uh, let's let's animate it so we can actually see it over time. Because sometimes that's just way more revealing than just changing values by hand. So let's do now is a float. Um, let's go down here. And just pass in now, which is calling the function now, which gives us some time. Um, and then we're going to set instead of 0.5, um, we're just going to do abs of sine now. So this is as we're moving between um, y is 0 which is a flat line down here. That's that fine black edge there. And one, which is also the, um, which is also zero, the fine black edge up there. Then 0.01. Wow, that very quickly changed. Um, let's... We get a very slight vignetting down here. And then obviously we have this nice strong point in the middle. And so this is essentially sweeping. It's kind of like an ECG of an effect. We have a two-dimensional effect, but we can only we can only view like one dimension of it. Actually, this would be a really good place to use that other uh, graphing library that I have. Like, um, 
That was it. That's defined in Nineveh as well. I wonder how quickly we could dump that in. Let's have a look. Uh, Nineveh. Oops, it works. Nineveh. Uh, graphing. Um, particle. Particle graph. Okay. Define P graph. How is this used? Kind options, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had an example of this in, what was it, Fraggle? Um, hey, here we are. Height and color. Oh man. Just bear with me a minute while I faff around with this. Um, oh, come on. Particle graph, what kind of ones do we have? Um, yeah, height. Height is a separate one. Okay, so maybe we can use that. Let's... Let's see what happens if I just take this and... Dump it in here somewhere. I would really like to be able to see this whole function, um, like for the entire um, UV space at once, which means we need a 3D graph because we want to graph uh, the values in the it, that come out from a, um, a 2D function. So we're going to need X and Y and then Z for the results. Let's have a look. So then we've got a um, graph thing. It's going to be a height graph. Um, and this is, okay, so this is the name of the coordinate, and this is, um, a uniform. So that's fine. Uh, and let's just return one for now. Is that what we do? Yeah, val's probably a float. Yeah, let's just return one. Um, that compiles at least. And then how do we use this? Uh, where's that fraggle or main? Was it? Ugh. Plain. Okay, that's a lot of arguments. Let's just copy that. <laughs> um, play with verts. Sorry, this isn't the clearest thing I'm doing right now, but maybe it'll be useful. Let's comment out splat. Um, let's look at graph thing, because that's going to be a function. Okay, at least we have some information down in the mini buffer now. Uh, so position and direction are going to be of the camera. So let's say that our position, we won't give it an animated camera. Wait a second, of course we can give it an animated camera. We've got some of those details around. Um, we must have. Have we got like a camera variable? Fuck yeah, we do. A perspective camera. Cool. What information does this have in it? It's a kind of perspective camera. It has a position. Cool. And it has a rotation, which is... Um, interesting. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, rotation. Oh, it's a quaternion. Fair enough. Um, that's fine. So yeah, we can do a quaternion two direction and we have a position. So can't we just do pos of camera and um, what would this be? Quaternion two direction of rotation of camera. That's what it seemed to be. And then an X minimum, uh, which is gonna be zero X maximum, which is one uh, Y minimum, uh, Y maximum. Uh, the step size is going to be um, uh, 
0 point, let's do 0 0.01. Um, so we get 100 points in both axes. Um, so we'll get 10,000 particles. Point size is 1 and spacing is 1.8. Let's just see, I suppose, what happens there when we do that. Oh, well, there's, there's, <laughs> there is something down there. Uh, we've still got this uh, scene sampler drawing, so let's get rid of that. Um, spacing is 10.8. Okay, let's uh, put it up a bit. 20, 100. Okay, all right. Okay, now we've got something. Does this work? Fuck yeah, it works. Nice. Okay, this is going to be our graph. Um, I'm going to bring the point size down a bit because it's a bit overwhelming. Um, oh, of course, it scales the graph. That's uh, actually useful. Oh, but it scales the... Hmm, I'm not sure it is, actually. One point two. Let's go 200. Okay, that's a little bit more manageable. All right, let's... Uh, Let's plug some values into this. So now we've got this pgraph function. We can call vignette. So um, with the coordinate value, hopefully. Nice. All right, let's see if we can get down and see what's happened here. You can see that the ones at the edge are lower down. And it goes up to a peak, flattens out. And then over here, it's going back down again. Cool. Let's uh, multiply this a bit so we can get some. Um, so we can get something that's a little more visible. So if we just do this times five, for example, there we go. Now we can see a much greater effect what the vignette is doing. Right. So now let's break this guy down again. Um, the UV came in. Um, yeah, the UV came in and we did this line. So let's just let's just return UV to start with and see what we get. Whoa. Um, the type expected was float, but what we found was a VEC2. That's true. Um, what should we do then? Should we just take let's take the X of UV. And naturally that's just it's a little confusing, actually. Why is it only going up in one corner? XP increasing on both axes? Let's look at the first step of the vignette, then. So we do this. Oh, wait. Vignette 0, vignette 1. The result will be vignette 1. So we're... This is vignette one. This is the result. Oh, come on now. Right. Are we working? Is everything still alive? Let's clear. Yes, it redrew, which means we're still running. So vignette one. What did vignette zero look like? Yeah, it's a different curve. It's got a kind of more barrel distortion kind of thing going on. It's flatter down here. So just raising to the power made a made a difference there. Let's have a look. So let's do EXPT1, EXPT 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.1. Cool. So that's definitely controlling that. And I think that's actually mentioned if we go back to one of these buffers that we had open. Which one was it? I don't know. Did I remove it? Let's look at the code over here. It says change power for modifying the extent or extend of the vignette. That's extent. Large. Extend of the vignette. Then multiply with STH for intensity. So that's some kind of intensity value. Um, I wonder if STH is something. Multiply with something for intensity. Um, oh, Jesus. That is very annoying.
Hmm. So I haven't quite got the intuition on it yet. But at least we have that function. So we have we have something that can do the vignette. Let's uh when I compile this, it's gonna break because now we're returning a vec4, so we come back here and we'll just take the first component of it and uh, then we can say continue. And then we can carry on graphing. I'm actually glad that we've got this uh Graphing thing sorted out. Some of the other functions I really wanted to to work my way through. Um, so let's have a look. What does this do? Because we've actually, I mean, we've graphed it, but we can't see what it does. So actually, uh, let's comment this out. Let's bring back splat. What's going on here? Boo! Um, yeah, splat's broken now because we've changed the vignette function. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so that's red again. So now we should be actually able to just do vignette um, of UV and we get the same result as was in this. So dark around the edges not super visible. I think it's coming up on the stream a little. You guys can let me know. Um, but yeah, very slight effect there. Again, not too much I can explain about it. This is more just me poking around. I hope that's all right with you guys. You can let me know if I should actually be trying to go into more detail and work out what actual things are. Um, I would also like to steal off this... Well, I, the, one of the things I'd like to do actually is just, um, seeing as these two seem to be parameterizable, we should uh, provide overloads that allow that. So, um, along with vignette, um, let's have one that takes um, two extra arguments, uh, which is the, what is he calling it? The extent and the intensity so intensity and extent extent um, and current extent well the default one he had was 0 0.25 oh yeah that's why I might look slightly different from uh what am I doing oh yeah I'm editing the wrong function if I go up here and go 0 0.25 oh a bug a bug. Nice. What the fuck is that? Could not find the correct type for type spec nil. What could have a type spec of nil? Assume that it's a fragment stage and try again. I want to know what broke here. The argument. Oh, yeah. It's a very bad error. It was to do with these guys. Right, so let's just uh, specify this because when I'm recompiling vignette, it's recompiling different functions. So, um, oh fuck, that's actually really annoying. Um, come on now, stop hitting all the wrong buttons. Um, let's delete uh, GPU function um, vignette. It's going to freak out and says there's a few of them to find. We found this one here, which take the type nil. This should error in a much better way and much sooner. Um, we didn't know which to pick because there are overloads. We're going to say use value and we're going to use number two. And then hopefully when we recompile this now, it doesn't fuck up. Cool. All right, anyway. Changing this one from one back to 0.25. The edges are darker now. And so you can actually see the same thing as we were seeing here. Um, so now we've got vignettes that can take arguments. Let's do the intensity like this. Let's do the extent like this. Um, we don't need these to be separate. Ah, uh, fuck it. Let's do that anyway. Um, and then really we could redefine this one in just terms of uh, vignette and passing in 15 and 0 0.25. And why is that not okay? Oh yeah, it should be a float. Point zero. 
Oh yeah, of course, idiot. It takes a UV, that's kind of the point. I could have passed in 15 there because that would have been promoted to a float before I got passed in anyway. Um, okay. And just to check that this is working, let's change 0.25 there or 0.9. There we go. So we can see that is updating. So that's our vignette function. Let's go and shove that um, in Nineveh. So it works. Nineveh. Uh, what's this going to be? I'm not sure what this falls under. Textures and streams and shaping functions and internal maths primitives, mesh easing, GPU, color. Yeah, we can just make a new thing for it. Um, vignettes. Vignettes. Paste that stuff here. And package Innova dot vignettes. Yeah, make the directory. Go to packages. It will go to. Maybe it's a color thing? Nah, it's not really a color thing. Anyway. Vignettes, use a bunch of things, export, import various things, that's all fine. And we'll export vignette. Right, now that package is defined, we'll do this. That function is defined. Let's go to Nineveh. Say we're. Ooh. What's that space doing there? We don't need that. We're adding vignette, and that all compiled. So now we should be able to, in our play with verts thing, use Nineveh.vignette, take the new one, get rid of our definition from here. And we're now using the vignette as defined over in Nineveh. Hooray! A new feature. Um, I will actually bring this back now because we're going to do another one, which is natural vignette. Um, we'll start, actually we'll start like this. Just with the UV. And we can parameterize it later. Let's go see what that function looked like. <laughs> Darius says, let's have a look, and he's off. Yes, I do get a bit like that. Darius is saying, so this stream, everything just works, huh? That's either sarcasm or we're watching different streams because I'm seeing a lot of stuff breaking <laughs> The 45th Vintage is a great one. Yeah, man. It's a lot of episodes. It's crazy. So let's have a look at Natural Vignette. Copy. Oops. Random buffer. Put it in C mode. Oh, do I have a GLSL mode? Yeah, it's probably just C mode anyway. This, this is fine. Oh, that was stupid of me. There we go. Um, sure. Again, it's a function that's taking a UV. It's doing, it's minusing 0 0.5 and then, oh, wait a second there. This actually wants the resolution as well. Interesting. 
minus 0.5 times 2, so you're getting in the range from minus 1 to 1. That's an interesting thing. What are they doing exactly here? So this is getting in the range 0 to 1. And this, this is doing, I mean, this part here would be putting the UVs from remapping from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to 1. And they're multiplying by the aspect ratio. Ooh. All right. Hell, we can define this one in terms of just frag chord and resolution. That's fine by me. Um, I'm not sure if it's worth doing UV and resolution because that's... It prob it's probably more likely that you have frag cord available. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting, actually, what we should provide. Maybe we change vignette. No, let's... Uh... All right, it's more work if you don't have it already, so let's just go with this. Let's do um, frag cord, not GL frag cord. Um, and um, resolution. It's saying I resolution, which I'm assuming is an integer then. Um, not that it's going to be a major problem here. I mean, the resolution is going to be whole numbers anyway. And the way they're using it is going to end up as floats. So that's fine. So let's just do VEC2. If it's an IVEC2, it can be converted. That's fine. Um, so, okay. Let's calculate the UV, um, which is... Swizzle of frag chord x y and then a swizzle of resolution x y. If you're hearing weird noises in the background, that seems to be a plane flying by. We've got the doors open because it's been stinking hot today. It's been great. It's been 28 degrees C, which is what something like 85, 86 Fahrenheit, which for Norway is pretty nice. So it's, uh, oh, yeah, one of the benefits of uh, working on your own time schedule is just being able to go out in the morning and go for a swim before you start work. Oh, just to gloat for a second. Damn, that's good. Right, um, what time are we at? 38. Yeah, we got loads of time. Right. Chord is times minus UV 0.5 um, divided by... X of resolution, Y of resolution. Let's put those together actually, because that's going to look better. And then two. And RF is, I'm not going to try and pick this apart in a hurry, um, is going to be the square root of the dot product. If you're dot producting with yourself, you are. What are you doing if you're dot producting with yourself? That's a, oh come on, that's a really simple thing. What does dot product do? Sums up um, the products of two things. So it's the sum of your squares is a dot is dot product of yourself. Okay. Oh yes, yeah, so a square root of sum of your squares is going to be like length, isn't it? Am I talking shit? This would be. This kind of looks like length to me, but that's interesting. Okay, dot of chord and chord um, times fall off. So let's do that. So already we have something parameterizable here. Where did fall off come from? Oh, it's up there. And we don't need capital letters there. We're not heathens. Fall off 0.25. Now I'll put that in your line. RF. Oh, squared plus one. Fine. <laughs> Let's just do it times RF 
FRF one E is the reciprocal, not the inverse I said earlier. I meant the reciprocal, didn't I? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, and this can just be exp2. Yeah, there's no way your compiler is not going to know that those are the same thing. So, oh, wait a second. This is I'm seeing. Uh, we're squaring once and squaring again, which is going to be things raised to the power of four reciprocal. I'm not sure what this one is for yet. Some kind of uh, some kind of offset. So that's our power of four that we were reading about earlier in the natural vignetting. So something of that is becoming visible. Um, and then... What a strange thing. Oh, this is multiplying. Okay, so this is really the result. And this is just applying it to something. Um, so I'm guessing that this... Yeah, so this would be your input color. But we don't need that. We would just return... E and uh, yeah, so let's just do this. Okay. <laughs> Darius is saying breaking, yeah, but you just figure it out right away. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's uh, well, other than a few of those, I've got to go and fix that RTG math stuff. Um, but yeah, I suppose it hasn't gone too bad. I'm I'm really glad that the graphing stuff worked. That's been awesome. Um, Sergeant Creeper saying, so I've been using Emacs for a bunch of years and now I'm finally feeling like I get the hang of it. It's been really hot here too. Um, Darius saying, damn, going up for someone sounds awesome. It is. It's so good. I got to, I don't have a picture handy of, uh, what the place looks like, but you've got a fjord and lovely water. Just, it's about 40, 40 minutes walk away to the beach I like going to. I'm going to try something a little closer, um, tomorrow just to see what it's like, but, uh, I really like that beach. Um, well, really, it's just a bunch of it's a little uh, a bunch of rocks that I sit on and can just swim off, go for an hour. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, Sergeant Queef bought a new monitor and he hadn't just because he hadn't plugged it in. <laughs> oh man, I have thought things have been dead before for the exact same reason. So I can't, I can't judge too much for that. that. Sucks, man. Oh, I suppose you get a you get a new monitor. Oh, Darius, a, a fjord. Yeah, it's Norway. There's just fjords everywhere. It's not like a super steep, like cinematic fjord, but it's it's a fjord. It's also a fjord. It's a. Uh, see if I can find a picture of it. Just a shove in the chat. Why not? Gloaty McGloat. Yeah, life's life's been pretty good, recently, oh, since I got it ready. Oslo fjord. Let's have a look. These are all a bit over the top. <laughs> Sorry, this is really weird. That looks like... Sorry, I'm trying to find something. They're such, uh, such dramatic shots, so it's kind of weird because it looks so... Uh... Let's have a look. It's weird because th this is not how it looks like to me because that's just so blue. I mean, that's a great picture. But I think that's... Uh, I think that's Oslo area. Let's have a look. Let's just look for Big Doy. Fuck it, I'm wasting time, but... Ah, screw it. You can... Google Oslo Fjord, you can find some things. But it is, it's it's really nice. And again, like... For some reason around here, like, the weather works out really well. The east of the country... Sorry, west of the country takes the brunt of all the weather coming in. So by the time it hits Oslo, you get... Everything's kind of... It's just kind of milder. It's really nice to deal with. So it's like, summer gets... Has been, like, the last couple of years has been really stinking hot for a short amount of time. And you get those really long days, so it's it's you can read a book outside at midnight. I mean that wouldn't be a problem. Um, 
and like it gets the darkest it gets is probably about two three in the morning and then it starts getting lighter again it never really gets super dark at the moment i'm not up like near the arctic enough to get the full like all day all winter like all summer thing and all dark all winter but you know we're up far enough i love that the same thing in scotland it's obviously lovely um anyway what are we doing uh natural vignette that apparently is a working function so that's cool um ah that's another thing actually that's a bit dumb in our existing oh that's actually really really stupid did we push that yet no we didn't and that's good because let's uh let's look at this why are we vec foring this we should just return the value because that's like if we return the float this is what's going to be multiplied with some color anyway so it's a kind of a silly idea to return that as a vec4 let the user do what they want to do with it um which in this case so let's uh stage that and squash it into the uh original commit that's done um or uh, amend or i think it's called There we go. Um, so now we can swap this out with uh, natural vignette. Whoa, that's way, way bright. What the fuck? How is that happening? Oh yeah, because we're completely wrong. We're meant to be passing in. Um, yeah, we could pass in actually UV and aspect ratio to keep it similar to the existing function. Because this is aspect ratio, right? X over Y. So this could be... Um, UV and then aspect ratio. Then we can go down to here, which is, I mean, it's still working because we've got the older definition of this. Um, what is the, uh, we can't actually get the resolution from the shade. Like, there's nothing in GLSL that gives us the resolution of the viewport, I don't think. But we can pass that in. So, res is going to be a vec2. Um, what? Oh, yeah, now we're passing in a boolean. Um, so, we're just going to say resolution. No, we're going to do um, divided by x of res y of res um, and then we're going to go and pass that up okay so that's down here resolution for now can just be the viewport resolution which is really what we want anyway um, for the current viewport good so now we've got this um, is that even vaguely correct That's looking pretty bright. Um, if I raise the power a bit, do we get... There is some fall off on the edge. Just looks really bright to me. Does not look like this. Well, let's have a look. One of the one of the nice things about Keppel uh, is a feature that we designed on this uh, these streams together. So we should be able to call natural vignette ourselves. So if we say at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, um, with an aspect ratio of, well, let's work it out. Where's um? Let's cut this for a second. We can bring that back soon. Let's go and get the resolution, which is um, the viewport resolution. Um, 
Oh, wait, we've... Oh! Res. Oh, no, we are doing it. So we divide x of that by y of that. 0.64. Um, no. Whatever. Um, we'll call natural vignette, which is a GPU function, but we can call it straight from the REPL, hopefully. 0.64, blah, 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 blah. And we get a result back, which is 1, which is excellent. Around the middle, that makes sense. Um, let's look at the edge. Okay, so there is 0.95. That's pretty high still. Um, I don't know, man. That's looking... Uh, 0.9 looks a lot higher than what we've got down here. <laughs> so what have I screwed up? God, I love being able to test this this way. Um, so... The frag chord is the position in, like, viewport space, if you like, of the coordinate, of the uh, fragment. And this is the resolution of the entire thing. So you divide one by another, and you're going to get a value between 0 and 1, or say a UV coordinate, from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Fine. Um... Just make sure that's definitely compiled and using the latest version and all that stuff. Um, then we got our fall off, which is 0 0.25, just hard coded there. We have our chord, which is um, UV minus 0 0.5 multiplied by our aspect ratio which is just our X resolution over our Y resolution, which we passed up and did here. We passed up the viewport resolution and we did X over Y. Um, then we've got times two, which is what's here. That is correct. Let's move this down to separate lines just so we can see we're not being crazy with what we're writing. So like that. That seems to match. RF is the square root of the dot product of chord and itself multiplied by the fall off, which is what we've got here. Square root, dot, chord, fall off. Um, then we raise RF to the power of 2 and we add 1, which we do. And then we do 1 divided by this squared, which is this raised to the power of 2. So uh, the next thing to do is to see um, what GLSL has been generated. So let's just do pull G um, oh, what's it going to be? Um, Natural vignette and it's back to flow. Oh no, yeah. Um, let's actually pull the whole pipeline because we're using it. So we may as well, uh, let's comment out this and yeah, let's pull down all of this pipeline. Okay. So here's the code. We can see down in main we're calling natural vignette, passing in um, some values, passing in um, yeah the resolution x divided by resolution y, and here is natural vignette. Bam. So we've got our fall off, which is 0 0.25. We've got our chord, which is uv minus 0 0.5 times aspect ratio. Um, times 2, which is fine. It's multiplied, so it can be done in... You can have the braces wherever. We have RF, which is dot product chord, chord. We square root that. 
we multiply it by fall off, that's fine. Um, oh, it's kind of disappointing that that turns into that rather than squared. Oh, I, I, that's a Unicode problem. Never mind. I'll, uh, I'll fix that someday, hopefully. Um, okay, so we take RF to the power of 2, which is the same as this. Um, and then we add 1. Um, I might rewrite this just to be more true to this code. Um, and then we do 1 divided by this raised to the power of 2. Yeah, let's just uh, let's fuck with our code just a little. EXPT, wherever we see that, let's just do multiply RF by RF. Let's take this fancy name that we've got here, uh, which is RF2 underscore 1. We won't do underscore, we'll do that. Because it's going to get that done to it anyway. Let's do this, do this, do this. Okay, so here's our new version, which is RF2 underscore 1 times RF2 underscore 1. 1 divided by that, yes. RF times RF plus 1, yes. Square root dot product fall off, yes. Okay. So this code looks fine. Um, is it possible that the UV input's wrong? Nah, we would have seen that before now. Surely. Um, maybe it is just meant to be that subtle but it doesn't look like it in the other one so I'm kind of disturbed by that idea um, maybe we do a more again a, a once again more true to the original version because it might be that I'm interpreting this wrong so let's do what we had originally which was uh um, frag chord, which is a vec2, and res, which is a vec2. Um, and then let's do, 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 do fall off is 0.25, that's fine. Um, aspect ratio, we're going to do uh, res. Um, Oh, I say x of res divided by y of res times 2, blah, blah, blah. Um, maybe it matters that it's integers. Again, this is going to turn into a float immediately, so I don't see why, and the floats are going to be whole numbers. No, it doesn't make any difference. It's, it's just thinking wrong. Um, let's calculate uv, because we're going to need that now, which is the um, frag chord divided by um, the res. Yep, that looks good to me. That's natural vignette. Let's do this. Then rather than UV, we're going to pass in the GL frag chord. Um, and we're going to pass in res. Oh, I didn't like that. When passing in a vec4 and a vec2. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. So let's swizzle it down to uh, x and a y. Um, Valid number of arguments, zero? Who's got zero arguments? I don't see a function with zero arguments. Assume it's a fragment stage and give me the details. Um, natural vignette. Is this just an older one? Am I being an idiot? Yeah, okay. That was just an older error. Never mind. So, let's make sure I haven't gone crazy and that we're still putting out colors. Yep, that's red. Okay, and now this is one version, and this is the other version. They look the fucking same. So, it looks like the, the actual implementation is right, and it's just looking really bright on my monitor, and I'm wondering why that is. Maybe I've got this calibrated badly, but then why does it look good over here? This is this duration's way too obvious and graded. Like, graded. This is... I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing wrong? Source is just one. And they're taking RGB and multiplying it by E and setting that to one. So this is one times E, which is correct. It's fine. What am I missing, guys? 
Um, oh, what have I done? Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, chatter. God, I love you guys being here. This is really cool. Um, Darius saying Norway is on my uh, travel to list. I've been to Scotland. That was already awesome. Hey, man, if you're ever in the area, feel free to look me up. I'm happy to have you around. That'd be cool. Can talk Lisp and have some beers. It'd be lovely. Um, yeah, don't go in middle times. Like, go either, like, middle of summer or middle of winter, depending on what you want to see. Um, because, like, the transition phases don't take too long, but they always kind of suck. Like, winter's nice. Once it's snowing, lovely place to be. Uh, but the rainy bit is just a bit there. It's not the country at its best, anyway. Um, Sergeant Queef said he used to go to Norway quite a lot uh, for his job, um, nor but went down to Stavanger, where the oil business is. Yeah, it makes sense, man. <laughs> I was mainly hungover, so I didn't really experience it. Oh, that's a shame, man. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Norway is West Sweden. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> I'm not going to get into <laughs> racial banter here. I want to be saying, Europe is such a gift for this. Spin the wheel, pick a country, grab a ticket and your ID, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and such a group says, and then you end up in Bel Belarus. And they're all in Belarus? Go oh, there, probably a good demo party there as well. Gotta be. It's been a biased wheel. Um, I've got enough monitors, guys. One 40 inch monitor is enough for me to work with. Actually, I've got this monitor as well to the side, uh, which I use for random crap. Um, mainly virtual office stuff. Yeah, so this function is looking correctly written, which is annoying. I'm going to have to look into this after the stream, I think, because I don't want to... I mean, we're, we're already past the end time. Um, so, out of respect for my partner, I should really allow the flat to be returned to normal use rather than just me monopolizing sound. Um, yeah, so that's natural vignette anyway. I'm going to move that over to uh, temporarily into... Now, I'm going to leave it here and we'll push it into Nineveh later. Um, I actually didn't get to the other things I wanted to look at, so we'll probably do that next week is just pulling some more things. Um, there's different kinds of distortion. So this is a barrel distortion filter. You can see that this, let's just uh, swap out the filtering a little. Uh, where is it? Um, so it's a different kind of screen deformation kind of things. So radial distort, which we've done before. Um, you see it's actually still kind of maintaining this shape. Um, a barrel distortion kind of bulges out the screen if you think like old TV the big old curved TVs is a kind of barrel distortion thing this is way over the top but yeah um, and brown conradi, conradi distortion conradi. just seems to be really nice I don't know I just like the way that looks so I'd like to get these distortion functions into Nineveh as well um, then there's this one we're just gonna throw through the uh, cross compiler um, and get it from GLSL straight into Lisp because I don't want to type this out and get it wrong. Uh, this is, um, yeah, it's uh, FXAA, which is a post process anti aliasing. It effectively does an edge detection and then blurs on its detected edges, which is really cool. So it's a fast, approximate anti aliasing. It's really good for just throwing in something so it looks better. And then, I mean, if you want to switch to a different uh, anti aliasing thing later, you can. Uh, I mean, obviously technique permitting, so if you're doing... Yeah, that's a rabbit hole I won't go into. But um, 
This I was just looking because it's Timothy Lotz and he's the guy that made FXAA and he's a super smart dude and there seems to be some interesting things here with Temporal Dithering and stuff like this which I wanted to have a look at and Hex Dump which is really cool if that's actually useful that would be really nice. This was the thing we were looking at earlier actually these were both the things we were looking at earlier. So yeah it would be nice to get the um, FXAA and the Barrel Blur stuff in next week. And then it'll just be a bit more in Nineveh, which is just nice to have. There's a few of these things when you just when you throw onto a simple scene, they just look a bit better. Um, actually, that's what we'll do to wind up. That's that's what we'll do. One second, let's just do um, play with verts. Not sure if it's going to show up, but then let's just do this. And um, oh, how's that going to work? Actually, uh, oh. hopefully. That's not. <laughs> That's putting the vignette on the objects. Stupid. Um, oh, we need a quick. We need a quick way to post-process this thing. Um, this would just be such a nice way to finish. So I would really like to do this quickly. Um, this we pass in a sampler. Sure. So let's just do. Um, Texture, sand on UVs. Let's multiply it by our vignette. Um, let's do this. Let's bring back splat. Um, and oh, there it is. So I'm seeing some banding, which I don't like. Um, let's let's put the background to something horrendous so we can just see that this is actually working. Um, set a clear color to. Cool one. So, without the vignetting, with the vignetting, it just looks slightly better. There we go. That's what we did. We hit the end. We finished. Let's come back next week and bring some um, distortion shaders into. Uh, into Nineveh. That'd be cool. Right. Thanks so much, guys. I'll just have a quick look through the comments and then we'll be off. Da 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 da. Can't have too many. Yes, I can. My desk is already full. Um... Oh, the barrel. Wait a second. The barrel blur stuff tab in your browser is playing sound. What the fuck? You can hear that? That means sound is working. What the shit? That's crazy. That is the most temperamental fucking thing. I've been trying to get that working, and every time I've wanted to do an episode with that, with doing sound effects, hasn't worked. And now it's just fine. Mm. Anyway, that's that's good to know. Maybe we can do something with sound another week. Um, right. <laughs> um, okay, Karam! Sorry you arrived so late, man. Good to see you, though, even if it's just for a second. Um, we heard your other videos, too. <laughs> oh, you fucking scared me there. What? What else did I have? Oh, that's good. You never know with the stuff on Shader Toy. You really could just be having... I mean, there's like, there's Britney Spears video that's used a lot. So if you want to listen to that on loop, 10 seconds of that for the entire stream. Oh, oh. That's good. Anyway, enough, enough. I'm wittering. Catch you people later. Thank you so much for stopping by. Ciao.